Hello and welcome to a review of an Alpha Team Mission Deep Sea set. Uh, Deep Sea was sort of the midpoint of Alpha Team between the first wave and I'd say the themes end when it was rebooted into Agents and, you know, it, it went from Alpha Team, you know, kind of its own unique thing to just Agents, like, you know, nothing. It was burned to the ground and re reformed as the ba most basic of elements. But Deep Sea is, you know, it still has a lot of personality. It has very weird sets. Uh, this set in particular is kind of like a hallmark for the advancements and basically everything wrong with LEGO in 2002 and everything weird about LEGO in 2002. Um, it has, it doesn't have that classic LEGO design with the um, blockiness and the square elements and the slopes, everything smoothed. But in 2002 in particular, this kind of style typically meant that there'd be tons of gaps everywhere and these kind of curved pieces would dominate the entire model. Um, as R.R. Slugger um, talks about in his excellent, uh, the I think it's like the Lego Plague of 2002. That's one of his most famous videos. But this submarine, although it does fall to those th um, fall to those problems, it is pretty interesting in its own. And one of the reasons is first, all of the weird pieces in this. Uh, a lot of them are contained within this uh, sub module that comes off this front part, which you know it doesn't really feel like its own pod when it's just the head, and when the head is only these basically comprised entirely out of these two. Uh, large panel pieces, which again, it's like, that's the problem, like, man, these panels. But these arms are so weird. Uh, they're definitely a la Galador. They might even just straight up be Galador pieces recolored, but I doubt it. They have ratchet joints, which were introduced that year. And they're so strange. I can't think, I mean, besides outside of my Alpha Team Mission Deep Sea, I don't even know if these were used in any other sets. But they also have the Life on Mars arm which is so cool. This is this little grabber, is so good. There's not much in this kit for it to grab, but it can grab whatever you want it to. And these translucent neon green pieces, these spinners are so, so cool. I love them. They are, they're just excellent. Uh, they're such a good piece and I want more of them so I can put them into my own creations, but yeah. Uh, that's really the only bit of color diversity for this. It's really just black, yellow, and clear. We're looking at the main model itself. Actually, let's look at this in sub-modules. The next one we have is actually probably my second favorite. Um, it's almost as if it's like a little base for the sub. Um, on its own, it's pretty interesting. Uh, I like the idea that it could just float around on its own with these propellers. And this is actually, yeah, uh, how does this propel itself? Who knows? But it's, yeah, it's a nice little base. It has these jack stone pieces, which were in a lot of Alpha Team sets but in a um, unique yellow, uh, taxi. It, this has a taxi color scheme, now that I'm thinking about it. I know submarines are similar in colors, you know, yellow submarine, but yeah, the black, it's like a taxi. But the thing that's special about this is that there are two little robots that come off, and this is another unique piece, and it's also printed, which I will give Alpha Team a lot of credit. Yes, some of these prints are for ja from Jackstone, but we have a lot of printed pieces. Uh, I'll also say that I don't really love these designs. There's a bit of a washed out feeling to the metallic hues they go for that just kind of looks unappealing to me. It doesn't really feel sharp, and I don't know if that means it's cheaper or if that's a stylistic thing, but I'm just not super into it. I feel like it just kind of makes the build, which already kind of feels clumped, clumped up and murky, makes it feel a little more murky, but these robots are awesome. I like how you can imagine them operating on them uh, on their own, or you can put a character in there. Like, you can put her in. She's from the first wave, I forget her name. Uh, she didn't get a new hair piece. She, uh, this, is, this is the kind of unfortunate, unfortunate masking of hair pieces that LEGO sometimes did because they didn't really have a lot. So something like this implies that she has purple hair, so, or something like that, so they just put a normal hat. So it's like, no, she doesn't have purple hair, she's just wearing a hat. But yeah, that's unfortunate. Uh, but yeah, they fit in here. You got some ratchet joints and these unique little clipper pieces, which can fit a bar. And I don't know, you get two of these, which is so cool. And there's even a small little, uh, a smaller set that's just this robot because it's just such an interesting piece that you'd probably just want this on its own.
yeah, on the other side, you've got another one. So nothing really different there. Um, when you, we look inside the interior, just pop this open, and we've got a unique control panel. That's actually, uh, let's get some light in there. That's actually not two um, two by two slopes. That's one two by four slope with a long print on it. You actually get a second one on the other side where I've sloppily included the piece that has the rubber bands. <laughs> Uh, if you want to see that, I always thought this piece was weird because I, the Lego sets I got as a kid never had rubber bands, but I'd always get this thing and use lots and like wonder what, what it even was. Yeah. Uh, some nice symmetry here. Um, but again, the problem, like, I feel like this is kind of a Lego star Wars fan kind of complaint, but I just don't like how like there's nothing down here. Like it's just, it's supposed to be watertight. It's a submarine, but it's so not like, I don't know. Uh, it's fine for what it is, but it just bothers me. I don't know why it bothers me so much. It's just like, it's not like the idea that it's not like realistic. It's the idea that like, it's almost the opposite. It's like so much, so many parts of this are meant to like come off. That it's like, at a certain point, it's like, what does this accomplish? Like, it's just like, it would make more sense if it was like on land. I don't know. I mean, maybe you can imagine it like that. Like, it's like, oh, this is the land version. They... Uh, they land some bit where, and they put this down, and then they go underwater with the other part of the set. But yeah, uh, it's definitely, definitely interesting. Definitely interesting. So let's look at the, oh, and actually there's a random uh, circular piece there, which is kind of weird. Like, what is, I don't know. <laughs> uh, yeah. The last section is also very weird and has a lot of gaps. This just looks so unappealing to me. It's like these large sloped pieces, but they don't match up. And there's this big hole there. Um, you have this bumper from Jack Stone, but it actually serves a purpose because we actually have uh, the core of this is a really, really weird, interesting piece. A gi it's almost like uh, a gigantic chest or, is it, or storage is the way it's used for this. Um, this has the Jack Stone style connection of just one ratchet joint. If we take this off, this in itself has so many holes. It's such a weird piece. The way that goes on right there. And it's actually holding all your gear, which is two flippers, two black flippers, a air tank. Uh, one of these cool sonar pieces. I love these. Oh my god. Feeling this like af after, because this was sealed. So like feeling these like brand new is so surreal. That's one of my favorite parts about owning this set. And the uh, um, goggles, which... Yeah, these are all equipped equipment for um, deep sea travel, so that's good. These printed pieces are also notable, but they are from Jack Stone, so take that with a grain of salt. You can put them all back in, and a thing you can do, like a lot of modular sets, is that if you want to just include the, um, I guess the core essentials of the submarine and kind of split it off, you can do that. If you want to just have the head and the tail, uh, go right ahead. It works, actually. About the head, another unique print. This one's actually one of my favorites. It really is sharp and has a nice little metallic bit to it. Uh, does this look good? Uh, I don't know. This looks kind of bad, but that's okay. That's okay. It's a cool feature that you can have it like this, even if it's kind of off. But... I don't know. This set's kind of lovable in a way, like all Lego sets are to me. Uh, even if it's so bad, <laughs> if it's so chunky, but not funky. Let's take a look at the minifigures. We've got our purple girl. It had the print quality. Um, I don't know if it's the quality, but this graphic style is similar to that of the prints. And because of that, I think it's kind of ugly and not in a normal old Lego wonky kind of way, just in a kind of ugly gradients, non appealing, murky kind of way. This color of hand, um, I don't think it's medium, I don't think it's light gray, I think it's like some different color. Um, it reminds me of the hands from Snape, um, who I just have offhand right there. Uh, cool that it has um, leg printing that actually matches with the other figures from this theme, which is really cool and actually takes this kind of ugly print and makes it um, more desirable because you got a whole collection of these guys. You could really give people matching pants, which who doesn't want to do that? I have said before that the hat is just a mask, that they don't have a hairpiece, which is unfortunate. So I kind of imagine this figure works better 
uh, or plays better if you have all the equipment on her specifically. Uh, so let's do just that. Let's play some Drissel. Uh, the other flipper is somewhere. Don't know where the other flipper went. I'm doing a interesting job with this. Whatever, you get the point. It looks better when uh, all the gear when the gear is on. Uh, the other guy is actually far better. Um, I love his face facial expression. Like, let's zoom in on that. Like, oh my god, and it has that sharpness. Like, this print quality is amazing. Like, god, his face, his little stubble too. He's so funny looking. And the the um print on his on his torso is actually feels like a completely different art style than that of the girl, which is interesting. He's got some dynamite on there. I mean, maybe not a completely different art style, but this has none of those gradients that I don't like about this one. Uh, and I don't really know what's going on. He, I guess that's the Alpha Team logo, that little world thing. Yeah, it looks very different on both figures. Again, it's very clear that two different people designed these. He has a green arm, which kind of makes him unique. Maybe they would give her the uh, purple arm, or like a yeah, purple arm if they really uh, did that color more often. But green arm, cool. Uh, and again, the cool um, printing down there uh, for his legs. He's got a bandana, which I feel fits better because it's like this guy looks like a banana, f a bandana fella, so it works. I'm very, I'm sorry, I'm very bumbling for this. I, I just thought, like, you know, I want to review this. I want to review a set. <laughs> and I had this one out, and it's like, you know, this is the one. Even though maybe, maybe I shouldn't have <laughs> bothered. All right. Let's take a look at the packaging, because I actually have... Oh, there's the other flip. Because I actually have all of the materials from this, because it was brand new. Here's the manual. Um, it's a nice manual. Uh, it's got this disgusting looking Sonic Adventure like logo style like realistic texture like oh but that's okay the steel it actually starts with the um, ad for all the sets and there's some in here that I'm actually interested in getting despite me kind of being negative in this review um, that one I like the red on that a lot that might be a good one I actually have reviewed this set before it's really great uh, probably the best one from this line. And I'm actually really, really interested in this set in particular. Uh, it's just such a weird looking base. And all those pieces look so unique. It's got those UFO panels that I always love to see. And look at that giant trident. I've never even seen that before. I, I want this one. That's the number one set I want. But the rest of the sets, I don't know. I feel like it's such a, it's a weak lineup. A lot of these just look samey. Like they've got the same problems too. Uh, but uh, at least you've got some funny animals. The instructions themselves, they're Lego instructions, you know. You got a murky sh the shark tail looking background here. It just looks like poo water. That's okay. Um, yeah, not much going on here. There is a, a meter for how deep you're going. Uh, 50,000 leagues under the sea, perhaps. Yeah. In the back, you've got a comic. I'm not in the back yet, but when we get to the back. Uh, oh man, there's a squid. She gets into action. It's kind of interesting seeing this character in a more uh, cleaner art style without like the gradients. Uh, it's definitely, it's like easier to tell what they're actually supposed to look like. But I do love these like Lego comics where they take the Lego figures and draw them in like a 2D art style. Uh, a la Monkey Kid as like a modern day example. Zack. Uh, there's a big Zack right there. Oh, I love that. It's so funny looking. Slam. Oh, they're breaking the thing. Hey, where's Ogle? And they show off the fact that you can take apart the sub. Or, yeah, to make it a little baby sub. Or is it the opposite? Oh, is this, is this a different set? No, it's definitely not. I'm going crazy. That's another really good face. Uh, yeah. It's kind of late right now. <laughs> okay, they're crashing. And then Ogle's like, dang, man. Alpha team for Game Boy Color. <laughs> 
Yep, I actually own Alpha Team for Game Boy Color. But that's based on the first wave of Alpha Team, but I guess it was still around. Uh, the logo is actually the same as the logo we see there, but I'm not sure if those old sets have this new have this logo. They probably do. Uh, you've got a weird maze. Interesting. To get to the sub. In the back, we've got some alt builds um, that we will also see in the back of the box. Speaking of which, let's take a look at this box. It actually has the name of the characters. Um, I could have just looked at that instead of calling it girl, boy, but whatever. The front, we've got a nice, uh, let me move this camera a little bit. On the front, we've got this nice um, render of the ship. It makes it look a lot cooler than it does in real life. Um, I like the angle they've got. I like the little guy down there. I like our little characters hanging out. Alpha Team Mission Deep Sea. You know, it's kind of weird that this has a subtitle because LEGO considers the whole theme just to be Alpha Team, but fans kind of dub each wave as its own thing because this is very, very different uh, design-wise than the first team of Alpha, Alpha Team, almost as if it's a reboot. Got some metallic hues there on the side. This is bolted. Uh... I think the first wave of Alpha Team also had this, but I love the detail of including just a rogues gallery of all the characters. Uh, Crunch, Cam, Ogle, Dash, Charge, Radia, Flex. We have Radia and Crunch in this set. A lot of cool characters. Okay, some of them do have really good face prints, like Flex and Dash especially. Crunch is also good. We have uh, a nice different shot of the set. I wonder if these are, like, archived on uh, brick set in high quality, because they do look very nice, but I'm sure that whatever was posted on the internet of these was not, not up to that quality. In the back, we've got some alternate builds, and it um, shows us the comic that can be included. Now, these alternate builds are so fun. This, I think, I'm gonna be honest, obviously the main build uses more of the actual pieces, but I think these are cooler than that, because they actually either um, use the sort of weird curvy pieces, like, less, so you don't have to, like, use so many of them, you know, it's more balanced, or they just go completely, like, nuts, you know, they don't even use them, like, where's the curved pieces there? This is just some funny elephant robot. I actually love this one. This is my, I, th I like this more than the main build, and I'm not even joking about that. It's so funky looking, and I love the use of the gear there, like, it uses all the all the most of the cool pieces. I'll say that we've got a little robot that uses the two small uh, actual robots as legs, which is so cool. He's holding chainsaws, and this one's just a nice um, use of the pieces for a more conventional looking model. Just imagine, yeah, yeah. We have some other pieces of paper, such as the 2002 catalog. Maybe I'll look at the catalog someday. I have a lot of them actually at this point. And a um, ad for Lego Magazine with the buildable minifigure. Or, I guess all minifigures are buildable, but the brick built minifigure. Lego Shop at Home, Connecticut. Maybe that's where this was gotten, or was that their headquarters? Yeah, that's about it for this set. I'm um, sorry to be negative. I don't like being negative in these reviews because it's weird because some, some mediums like film and video games, negativity kind of breeds this um, kind of... Uh, passion where it's very easy to point out flaws and like understand why things don't work but for lego sets it's a lot harder to pin uh why i don't like a lego set you know because all lego sets kind of have the same uh i don't know they have the same form factor in a way that kind of makes it so they're all kind of objectively pretty good it's hard to say like oh this lego set is awful because at the end of the day you're still getting a lot of cool pieces usually in this set especially you get a lot of cool pieces so you know like you'd think that it'd be like oh this is a great set has great pieces but just the way they come together is sometimes hard to put into words why it may or may not work and i think this set just i don't know i don't think it's great i think it's kind of poor it's way it's um this it's way less than the sum of its parts because the parts here are super interesting i love the arm i love the weird robot <laughs> oops i love the prints uh i love the weird chest in the back but it's just not very appealing the way it all comes together and i think that's kind of um the problem with alpha team deep sea 
and deep freeze uh, maybe more so deep sea because this one has weirder more uh, awful not awful uh, definitely not awful more uh, niche pieces uh, that just doesn't come together into something that I can say is a model that I want to display. But to be fair, I do think this makes a very good toy, especially back then. I feel like this would have played way better in 2002 than it does in 2023. I almost said 20, 2022. Then I almost said 2024. Anyways, that's all for me. I'm sorry if this was a scatterbrained review. Uh, I love you all. Have a good one.